Welcome to the Gas Station Cappuccino by Caffeine and Kilos. I am Danny. Next to me is Dean. Let's get this bread. Let's go. <laughs> I thought you were gluten free. Let's get this bread. Let's get this gluten free bread. That's what I'm talking about. It's a, uh, all the kids are saying it on Instagram these days. Yeah, I know, I don't get it. I don't think there's nothing, I don't think there's anything to get. Well, I guess I do get it. Well, one thing, you know, one thing I'm getting. This bread. This bread. <laughs> that's right. That's right. Uh, Dean, I want to first just get right into this. Okay. Tell me about aliens. About aliens? Yeah. Like my opinion on aliens? Yeah, that's a good place to start. Well, shit. I just read... Oh, I... Are they real? Are they not real? Do they exist? Do you like them? Do you not like them? You pro-alien? You against them? We find aliens? Should we blow up the planet? Should we reach out to them? Why haven't they reached out to us if they do exist? Just, just you know, real quick, what, how do you feel about aliens? Are they real? You can start there, I guess. I'm going to go with... I think that it's... Uh, I think that it is naive to think that we are the only possible thing in the universe that has no end, that has any type of intelligence. And I don't think that that contradicts anything. So, yeah, same. Uh, so the thing is, it's interesting how you said any sort of intelligence because what's also possible is that there is some sort of life, but not necessarily... Like a person, like a like a cartoon alien. And that's the TV. funny thing. Like you tell people like, oh, there's aliens. People like freak out. But that's because you assume that they're intelligent or have human-like or greater intelligence. What if like they find some planet and it's just full of fucking deer? Or something, yeah, that resembles that. Right. Because I think like, well, according to science, like how, the how things many... that we have on our planet are here because of our planet. Right. So there's, we haven't found anything. Obviously, I'm not saying that we've looked everywhere. Obviously, we haven't. But right. there's nothing that even remotely comes close to the like, resembling the same kind of environments that we have to create these things. Well, so that's really interesting. Uh, well, and well, I was just thinking, too, just back to our planet. How many animals are on, or how many living organisms are on Earth? Yeah, I mean, yeah. I don't and know. what's the closest, intelligence-wise, to, to humans? Right? And so... Really, you look at it like that, there's so many types of life forms, even just from plants. Mm -hmm. You yeah, know? Trees. All, like all the way water. up to, to humans. Because water has living organisms in, in it. it. Right. Well, there's random bacteria in, in the ocean. Mm -hmm. All right. So, yeah, from bacteria to, to humans, right? So, say there is life on another planet. You know, it's a, we've always assumed, or you hear aliens, it's always an assumption that they would be as intelligent or more intelligent than humans which is interesting everyone always assumes more intelligent and that's just a uh, i mean you could say that i think it's just a fear thing like people are always afraid of that too well uh it's funny you brought this up because i was just reading this thing about how this harvard's doing this harvard has been doing this study with this uh the high, harvard i think some science department at harvard and is working together with somebody on this thing where we have we have basically documentation or yeah. footage of that big ass uh i can't remember what it's called they call it like q or they calling it like o or something like that it's like a single letter uh object hmm. that they think has been basically keeping tabs on us as a <laughs> as a uh, as a planet ah. it's this big shit it's this big uh tubular almost hot dog shaped thing mm -hmm. out there that's moving at speeds that are um, in their own world, in their own realm of speed. Where'd you, where'd you read about this? Uh, I read about it on an article. I was like a buzz, might have been a buzzfeed, but then I heard about the people talking about it on uh, Dan Levitard podcast. Hmm. Uh, or not podcast, a uh, radio show this morning. Yeah. So I've seen it twice now in the last week. So I haven't it's heard... A Harvard, so it's a Harvard, it's Harvard's putting on this study with some other... Someone. I don't think it's NASA. It might be NASA. Right. I don't know. But it's a Harvard Space Department. So there's this object out there. Oh. And it's uh, it's basically longer than it is wide. So, and it's like supposed to be pretty, it's a very, it's very unique shape. And at right. first they thought it was maybe some kind of asteroid or some kind of something like that. But it keeps coming back and then disappearing at incredible speeds. 
periodically. Hmm. And they so, don't know why or what it is, and they're losing, and they're running out of uh, normal th ways to explain it. Well, so I, I haven't heard anything about that. It's fascinating. Uh, what what uh, got me into, onto it or thinking about this? I was talking to my brother the other day, and he, he's a uh, cop. He's a cop. Listens to a lot of Joe Rogan. Also, cops. Because what, what cops you, have a lot of reports. Cops have a lot of reports. Also, cops listen to a lot of podcasts because mm -hmm. you're driving. You're in the car all day. Mm -hmm. Twelve, you know, whatever. When you're not busting perps. Yeah. So, uh, or while you are busting perps, probably. I mean, you're driving them out to jail. Gotta listen to something. Mm. Anyway. So uh, I was talking about uh, Joe Rogan had this guy on who's an astronomer, mm -hmm. and this guy's name is uh, Adam Frank or Frank Adam. I think it's pretty sure it's Adam Frank. Anyway, so I started listening to it this morning, and here's the the gist of it: is that before, up until recently, up until it was actually 1995, before then we had no evidence that there were other planets around stars. Like you go out, you look up at stars. Oh, look at all these stars! But we had no clue whether or not there were planets around them. Of their own in, solar in, system. In fact, the, the common thought was that they didn't necessarily have planets around them. They, there was just no, no clue. It's a right? bunch of suns out there. Just a bunch of suns out there. Well, whatever, right? Um, no, no evidence either way. However, then they finally, whatever, in 95, 96, something like that, they finally had a... Uh, you know, microscopes they could see, or not microscopes, is microscope that the, not telescope. the telescopes, there we go, one of those scopes, uh, they could see far enough and they could actually see what's going on everything, and that's when they found out that they realized that, oh no, actually, every single star you can see, with few exceptions, obviously, but by and large, every star you see has its own family of planets around it, mm -hmm. right? Now, you take that, and then that, based on how many stars they know exist, mm -hmm. okay? And then they even uh, uh, accounted for stars that were either light or planets that are likely too close to the star to inhabit life, right? Um, and then also they accounted for planets that were too far away to inhabit life. So too close, too hot, or too far and too, too cold, whatever. So just, just ones that are within the distance that could basically hold water. Like if you poured water on the surface, it would not immediately evaporate or would not immediately freeze, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. um, you want to hear the, the number of planets that are out there in the universe at, you know, that uh, could, could sustain water, therefore could, uh, you know, in theory, sustain life? 10 billion trillion. Yeah, I was going to say something like bajillion. 10 billion trillion. I don't see, we should actually do this. We should get a piece of paper and see if either one of us can write out the number 10 billion trillion. Like, I don't know exactly how many zeros that is. I don't have to, like, I have it would to, take, take some me, like, time. some time to think about it. Yeah. It would take some, it would take some time, some zeros, and some comps. Anyway, 10 billion trillion. Uh, so, the thought that there is no sort of life form outside of planet Earth means that you think that we are one out of 10 billion trillion. Yeah, and that's kind of where I always land with it. Yeah. I always look at that isn't number. That, isn't that, that interesting? Well, I look at that. That's also... But just the thought that they know, they now know that every single... That all those stars, all those stars have some family of planets. Like, that's fucking wild to me. Like, no, it makes no. sense. No, I, yeah. Like, I don't doubt it at all. No, no, but no. I, just never, I never thought of it like, like, oh, yeah, maybe some. But it's like, oh, no, like, pretty much all of them. No, yeah, I've always... Like, I've that's been, totally I've been wild. In, I've been into the whole that whole... This whole kind of stuff for a long time, and... So, I mean, I've always... I thought it'd be something you'd be into. Yeah. So, I mean, I uh, I totally get it. And uh, I, mean, I always look at it as the stars are... It's infinity. The galaxy's infinity. We don't know right. when, when or if it ends. Or, you know what I mean? Like, you just don't know. Well, that's the trip, right? Go outside, look up, and just know that that goes on forever. Yeah. <laughs> and then there's those things out there that mathematically have to be out there, like black holes and shit like that. Yeah. And where does that go? <laughs> You know, like, and then you start getting into other weirder shit than that, uh, with just like dimensional stuff, and that's yeah. a whole other thing. That's a whole other thing. But yeah, that's the uh, sorry. That, so that's why I listened to on the drive in this morning. So yeah, and I was like, yeah, why? When are we doing this whole alien thing? I did butcher. I butchered that story earlier because I was like half listening and half just driving yeah. and paying attention. Uh, but look that up. Look up that Harvard yeah. space study about the Super about the spaceship situation, uh, quote unquote. Actually, they they actually don't. They're not calling it a spaceship. They're calling it a. Uh, oh man, I can't remember the terminology. But it's basically it's not it's not a UFO. It is a uh, galactic 
base object. It's not like a, they don't have, they don't it's have, it's not, like, a, it's like a new, it's kind of as a new classification. It's not an unidentified flying object, even though that's what it is. But it may not be flying, it might be floating. That's why that's there's why, no. There's not, there's no, yeah. And well, and when you, when you check it out or the listeners check it out, the Knights of the Grounds Table check it out, it's, uh, <laughs> it's moving at speeds that are not common. Like they're, they're not moving at any speeds that make any sense. It's not, yeah. it's not moving with, uh. It's not moving with, you know, the gravitational pull of whatever, yeah. Our solar system or right. shit like that. It's like moving rapidly and stopping and doing things. It's like re it's re it's moving around. All right, Knights of the Grounds at, at its own will. Knights of the Grounds table. Hit us up podcast at caffeine and kilos dot com. Let us know. Aliens, what do you think? And maybe maybe one of them, maybe one of the knights is a astronomer. Or an astrologist. Astronomer. Astrologist. Maybe it's an astronomer. Maybe he's a. Uh, we got Sir Sir Frederick out there. Is he's a, a scientist. Astrophysicist. He's an astrophysicist. He's gonna write in, and tell us exactly what's going on. I know they are. I know for a fact, which this is uh, this is a fact here, that there are rocket scientists that listen to this podcast. Oh, there we go. That's a fact. Huh. I have a cousin that's a. Uh, it's a nuclear physicist, and he uh, he does not listen. I'm yeah, pretty sure. Not positive. He's missing out. On not something. positive. Actually. He's missing out on a lot of facts. Yeah, <laughs> he really is. He could have so much input. Yeah. Uh, and then uh, the last thing about that is the guy said that uh, that actually within the next 30 years, because of the the telescopes they're building now, and because they know different things, and just as science progressing, right? Um, that over the next 30 years, he believes that they will know. Um, the likelihood that those other planets have have life, uh, or like the not even likelihood, but like basically factually be able to determine because they they can actually see now when these other planets are orbiting around the other suns, they'll be able to see whether or not there's oxygen in the air, and whether or not there's like methane in the air. They'll be able to tell that somehow, which is wild, right? Cool. And so it's like there's no basically if there's oxygen. Uh, in the air around that planet, like there is, there's definitely some form of life. Well, there, and like, quote me if I'm wrong, but like they've found out for a fact, it's a hundred percent fact that there's been water on Mars before. Oh well, there's, right? a, I believe. So. Well, here's the thing too: is even more than that is that uh, I'm not one hundred percent certain. I think so. But here's something else that I know: around uh, Europa is one of the moons around Jupiter, like a massive moon around Jupiter, and that there is it. Uh, the layer is ice. There's something like 10 kilometers of ice mm -hmm. on it, but they believe that under, there's 10 kilometers of ice, and then underneath that is going to be non-frozen moving, water, moving water because if there's ice, right? And so, anyways, there's it's likely that it's closer to the core of the mm -hmm. the moon. Yeah, so water is, can definitely be on other planets, but whether or not there's you know oxygen in the air or however that works, however that works, I'm not sure. And shit, I mean, it almost sounds like it'd be kind of f silly to think that just because there's not oxygen doesn't mean there's not other life forms that don't need oxygen to survive. Right. Like, we don't know the extent of our we're, knowledge as a human race. Well, we're, we're assuming that uh, what biology as we know it. Correct. Which is, is the only... Which is something you like to say how everything's just, it's all just a theory anyways. No, it is. Absolutely. <laughs> there's it's no absolutely such, a theory. There's no such thing as a fact. No. When it comes to that kind of stuff. If there's life form in other planets, uh, do you think that they're as or more intelligent than we are? I think it could be a mixture of everything. No, uh, yeah, I mean, I, in my in my in my reality, in my world of like space, it's uh, there's a little bit of everything. Well, I mean, same thing. You think there's of, different levels everywhere. You think of the chance of uh, 10 billion trillion. Um, say they don't all have life; they just could, right? So let's say that uh, let's say only one percent of those uh, actually have life, whatever that number is. One percent of 10 billion trillion, uh, and then you're going to tell me that you think that we also hit the lotto to be the very top most intelligent out of all of this. Yeah. Well, I mean, it, maybe. Maybe someone is. Why not us? But. But maybe not. Uh, kind of a good transition here. Speaking of human race. My next the, question was going to be: If they're aliens, do they lift weights? <laughs> Probably not. What? Probably not. You think they're smarter than that, or exactly. dumber than that? Well, I and you know they haven't progressed thus far. Or? I don't. know. That's a good question. Maybe that the their brains aren't wired like ours to have that desire for competition. Well, but competitive maybe, uh, uh, genes. Well, I was thinking just from, a, from an exercise standpoint. I don't know. And then also, the, th the so the reason this Adam Frank guy really got into it, or one of the things that really drives him to know more about it is actually a global warming thing. 
is he's like, look, we can't be, like, knowing what he knows as an astrophysicist, he's like, we can't be the only, uh, like, species that's been through this whole global warming issue before. <laughs> right? Like, if there's all these other planets out there and some of them may have life on them, uh, they're definitely using up, the, unless they have a fully sustainable society that's not using up resources, which is possible because that existed only 200 years ago uh, called Native Americans. But that's a whole other topic also. Yeah. The whole global warming thing is, uh, it's turned into this like gross kind of political thing now just to sell votes and it's kind of like really watered down the true information on like what's really going on with the environment. Oh, it's, it's a fucking mess. Go on YouTube and you People watch- People are just using it to just use it as a political ploy. It's, like it's just a buzzword now. We go on YouTube, you watch a video. This is why it's fucked. You go and you watch a YouTube video, global warming, and then immediately following it will be a three hour speech from some guy about how global warming is not real and like is presenting his evidence on that same thing and so it's just like like how how like you, how do people not just be confused when everybody's just using it as a political stumping ground and there's no like oh it's yeah we, it's a weird thing i'll be the first person to admit that i haven't taken enough time to research it on my own but then again every when i do i just get both extremes <laughs> so i don't know what the hell's going on it's the it's the facebook world it's like uh and then whatever you if you do actually take the time to read any of that stuff then you're just going to get bombarded with articles that say the exact same thing. That's so why you end up living in your own bubble where you're only getting told the information. You're living in confirmation bias. Yeah. That's why I try and stick to, uh, you know, like a Nat Geo source where it's not necessarily yes. like, it's just like, here's the facts of what's currently happening. Yeah. And that's all that really matters. That, that's like what's a, happening right now. And that's and a, what's going to happen if we continue to do the things we do. Mm -hmm. That's a, like that's kind of where it goes. Like who the fuck cares necessarily what happened in the past because we can't recreate that because things are different now. So like yeah. what can we do going forward and what is happening now? That's what I want to know my facts from that and time. What though. what are the effects of what I'm currently doing? Correct. And what are the long term effects of that? Yes. And I, I don't need to necessarily, you know, I don't need to be fed a bunch of information about, like, oh, look, this has happened before, back in, but yeah, but there also wasn't fucking uh, empires running, fucking burning all the natural this, resources in the air and destroying the earth as we speak. This is what I want to know. Uh, when I like drive a car and there are emissions that go into the air, mm -hmm. do those emissions in fact harm the environment? And the answer is yes. Okay. But. Well then, okay, exactly. So then is the question then is, is there a better way? Well, here's the thing. And I yeah. always I always use this example uh, whenever this kind of uh, emissions is brought up. Mm -hmm. And this is somewhere I, I, I saw this in like a, 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 a blurb, an article, right. a, a valuable, so, a, a valid source. Like a, it was one, like one of those, you know, Discovery Channel or one of those things. And they say, that the amount of emissions of like uh, right. pl air pollution from one forest fire, mm -hmm. major forest fire, right. is equivalent to a hundred years right. of automobile pollution. Uh huh. Like from our, like everybody. Oh, yeah. So I comp that. comprehend that. No, I believe that. Like that's insane. So uh -huh. it's like, yeah, our car is not the best thing, but like as far as like percentage wise, like the earth is doing that to itself way more work like way worse than we can even keep up with so like our air like our air pollution that's just one fire think how, how many fires have there been in the, in the history of the, of the of the world right that that fact's out there somewhere but like <laughs> okay well are we helping with putting air emissions or bad emissions from vehicles in the air no but like is it having any kind of micros like is it a microscopic like effect yeah, yeah kind of well, what you need to look at is you need to look at... Also, how am I going to get my fucking Chick-fil-A on Saturdays? So you got your Chick-fil-A. Well, there's well, the, there's other ways of transportation. Not, I'm not fucking walking. Well, no, I'm saying, like, what about cars that don't have emissions? They are not well, affordable. Well, then you get into the whole thing about, well, what about the factories that produce the batteries? And then what is the environmental impact of these big-ass batteries it's that are sit going in the car? It's going to sit in the soil. The, and Where are those going to go? Yeah. Well, where's all that battery acid going to go? Yeah, exactly. You're going to eva evaporate into the air, or you're going to dig a hole in the ground for it. Yeah, got to go somewhere. <laughs> That's a, so it's a it's a whole it's a whole thing. Who knows? Who, who knows? The landfill of battery dead batteries. Yeah. And that's like solar panels. Like okay, solar panels because then you don't have you know coal. 
you're not burning coal to you know get the electricity for your house okay well um that's great but then like what what is the environmental impact of producing the solar cells and uh, the go in your house and here's the answer i don't know I don't know. But it's something. It's something. If you think that like you get solar panels and then you're like from boom, now I, that, that's it. That's the bottom line end of the whole deal. Like, Yeah, how I'm many hundreds I'm of helping. years do you have to well, use those to make maybe, up for the damage that's already done? Yeah, but the, the, I really don't know. Maybe the answer really is like, oh, actually just in five years, like seriously, five years, it's a net zero. And after that's positive. That's great. But I don't know that's true. You know, in a perfect world where these things would just automatically just drop down and appear, and then we start from scratch right then and there when the whole world switched <laughs> over, then it might have some change. Uh -huh. But that's not a reality. It's not real life. No, no, it's not. And also, you know what? When people tell you all those things, they're they're just trying to sell you something. Yeah, yeah. Or they are just they real. might they might care a little yeah. bit, but they're also trying to yeah. fan their pockets. Or they're also just it also possible they are just entirely convinced of something because they just really like whatever they want it to be true maybe it's not even financial gain they just are convinced that something is true and then that that is and then they end up in the whole uh, confirmation bias situation yeah well there we go well i wanted to get back to the you know we we're talking about just people oh and yeah how lucky we are oh yeah so lucky me and uh, so here are, here i am minding my own business going to get dinner for me and my wife at the local uh turkey time teriyaki time no at the local uh you know bel air getting we're cooking oh yeah and uh, dinners is always usually, you know, we cook, try and cook at least five, four, four or five nights a week. We'll go out and get like a, maybe like a Chick-fil-A or something just to kind of do that because we like doing that. It's fun and it's uh, tasty and we don't have to cook. But um, anyway, so I'm there. Get what I need. Now I'm leaving and it's dark out. It's getting dark. Chick-fil-A gluten-free? They have gluten-free buns. No shit. Yep. And they cook your meat separately from the others. Your isn't chicken. The, isn't the chicken breaded? No, they have grilled. So you get, I know we're off top. So you get the grilled Chick-fil-A on a gluten-free bun. Yep. Oh, I just learned something. Yeah. And that's half the, that's one of the few places, I, like the fast food what places. What kind of sauce they put on it? None. No sauce. I go, no sauce. Is it? Is that even good? Yeah, it's really good. Their chicken's great. I might, uh, I might throw on if I come. You don't like I, put mayo on it? No. You just go raw dog. Well, Chick-fil-A, like, they do a really good job of keeping the meat, like, super uh, juicy. So it's not a dry, it's not dry at all. Huh. Yeah. That sounds really dry. No, yeah, it's not. I also have, it's like, moist. It's I have gluten-free condiments in my house if I really wanted to It's moist enough to, like, keep the gluten-free bun moist? But yeah, I, all the bites are pretty much fine, yeah. I got gluten-free ketchup. I got gluten-free uh, barbecue. I got everything. So if I want to put something on it or I want to dip into something, I got, I got that covered. Most time you just go raw dog. Most of the time, yeah, I just take it out and start going. Yeah, there it is. But yeah. um, sorry, go ahead. So there you go. There's your nutrition tip for this week. Yeah, if you're gluten free, go to Chick Fil A. They got you. Um, also, Chipotle chips are gluten free. Um, GSCnutrition.com. <laughs> Chipotle Chipotle tortilla ch or uh, corn chips are gluten free. Um, huh. So I'm there. I'm in my truck. My lights are on because it's dark. Bel Air. Bel Air. I'm leaving the parking lot, and here comes somebody from the main road, which is a pretty busy road, pulling into the, uh, yeah, I wasn't even going to drink that because uh, there, was coffee, there, there was coffee in there. I uh, didn't know. So I poured my water in there, and it's brown now. Uh, so, I just, oh, I thought it was just the black of the mug. No, there's coffee in there. I, I just, there's a hair. I'm like, I'm going to get the hair out. So, uh, so yeah, I, uh, I'm pulling out, and here comes this person. Pulling into the uh, wrong side of the road, hmm. into the parking lot. Uh, very busy parking lot, very busy street. And I'm, you know, I'm 10, no, not realistic. Uh, realistic, I'm five car lengths away from like where they are. I saw this coming a mile away, like, oh, look at this idiot pulling in to the wrong side of this huge, gigantic, like, entrance to this parking lot, driving on the wrong side of the road at night. And so I stay back, stay my distance, so they have plenty of time to maneuver out of the, uh, you know, out of everybody's way safely. And they get flustered. They start kind of panicking. Mm. And they cut the, they make the turn too sharp when they realize what the, what's going on. And they drive on the, they drive under the curb. And now their fucking little cars on the curb. It's turned into a fucking nightmare. Did they get stuck? There's like a center divider separating I'm the like two. Yeah. So now they're kind of stuck on there. And then now she's like... They high center it? 
the other kind. Well, there's a. It's big enough to where it's only one side of the car. Oh, okay. So like, but their car's pretty low because it's a regular car and it's a pretty high curb. So now they're fucking extra panicked. <laughs> and I'm far enough away. And let me mind, let me run you again. My lights are my lights are on, so I can like see them very clearly. What's going You're on? Your truck. I'm in my truck. Oh, so they can't see shit. They probably can't see shit. Okay. But then at the time, I don't. You know, I'm not even thinking about that. They're not like they don't look like they can't see. They're just like panicking. So they're like. So trying you're you're to, trying to back so up. Dean's got a Dean's got a trucks raised a little bit. Yeah, and so leveled they, out, leveled out. So big, these, big tires. So it's about a three inch lift kit, I guess. And so these lights are probably just going directly through their windshield onto them. Possibly, but it's I'm, like a deer in a headlight. But I'm pretty far away. I'm not like right on them. Like I'm trying to explain like how what color far. what color eyes this lady have. Couldn't tell. They, uh, they were deep. I couldn't even see her face hardly. You know, like they're pretty far away. So they're panicking. They're trying to get out. It's not that dark enough to where, like, my lights would be blinding them either. Oh, okay, okay. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. So, uh... Dusk. Yeah, it's getting dark. And, uh, they're fucking backing up. It's getting worse. They are, uh... Eventually, they fucking get off the curb and go by. And then the lady, embarrassed out of her mind, I'm guessing... Sure. Triggered, angry, upset, fucking pulls up next to me with her window up not down of course and just has this look of just like utter fucking just rage sure she's like but she's like fucking like 60 70 years old and beat red beat red i'm like i'm not positive that she did not have a heart attack after that in the parking lot and is now dead <laughs> she might have gone down like and her husband's in the car doesn't even look over he's an old man too he doesn't even care what the hell's going on <laughs> and she's just and i'm like as she's coming by, like I'm slowly like moving out of the way, and she is just fucking laying into me, yeah. fucking like beat red, screaming like I can't hear anything. Did you roll your window down? No, I was like getting ready to, but like we were like kind of passing. But her, she was driving kind of faster. And she's just fucking yelling at me. Her face is her mouth's like wide open, like a horror movie, like <laughs> screaming at me. <laughs> and Why I'm, was she so upset at you? I guess it was my fault that she's driving on the wrong side of the road. And that's what I was kind of getting at. I was like, man, we just have, we are, us human beings are just a special, special group of people. <laughs> and I honestly, I, I literally, I swear to God, I started laughing. Yeah. Like, what is I was like, are you, I was like, you are fucking psychotic. Like, what is wrong with you? <laughs> well, yeah. And then I drove off and went along with my night. But then I was like, oh, maybe, maybe she couldn't see because my lights. Like, I'm trying to think of like why she was so mad at me. For her driving but, on the wrong side of the road and parking like, on the curb. It wasn't pitch black outside. It wasn't. And also, if you were five or six car lengths back. Oh, dude, I'm, honestly, I think it was more than that. Like, I was like, I saw her coming. I, I was. You gave her plenty of room. Dude, no. Like, she, you could have parked, like, three school buses in between us. <laughs> I'm not kidding. Like, it was, like, that far. And, uh, yeah, and there was a train of cars behind me. So she was probably freaking out about that. So there's three or four cars behind me. Everybody's kind of watching. Like, what the fuck's this lady doing? One of the conversations was going on in that car. She was probably blaming me. It's my fault that she was driving on the wrong side of the road and drove onto the curb. And, like, she was, like, trying to wave me on, even though she was blocking the intersection or, like, the exit. Like, come on. Like, go around me. And I'm like, no, I can't fucking, it's no for me to go. I'm driving on the lawn. Like, she was freaking out. Ironically, you could have gone over the median. Oh, easily, yeah. But it's just like, I just couldn't help but think, like, man, like, our society is just like, no one can just take, like, blame for something, or, like, people are just so mad and angry. Well, we are just, you know, you know, you think about your, your odds of you being a human being are so slim. Yeah. And that's the way you get, like, you get mad and about that's something. How, that's how, that's you, how you That's how you treat it. That's how you, <laughs> you know, else that, that reminds me of, uh, of, uh, Ravi. Raw, raw of Earth. Ronnie Teasdale. Oh yeah, saw that video. They'll get a little blo uh, blood, a little mud bath. Oh, <laughs> I watched the mud bath one. But his thing, why he got that uh, Polaris, why he got that Raptor, that car, that's a three wheeler. Because mm -hmm. he has this theory saying that uh, people in cars, they he believes that when people in cars, like you see people in this road rage and like they're yelling at people like that in the vehicle. Uh, I think it's probably mostly has to do with the fact that you're, you feel like you're by yourself, even though you're in the car, that person. Yeah, there is. Right? Like, if you were standing there face to face, th that wouldn't happen. Like, think about it, you're in line somewhere, like at Chipotle or whatever. I mean, fuck, even Disneyland, you're, you're in line, and someone like, maybe goes to cut in front of you or something, 
you don't you don't just lose it and flip them off and start fucking yelling. If you yeah. say if you say anything, yeah. most of the time people just kind of don't say shit. I'm like, oh, that sucks. But if you say anything, it's like, hey, excuse me, um, the the back of the line. Or you just kind of rationalize it. You're like, you know, you, this old lady just uh, got maybe, in front of me in line. But guess what? Like, I'm not in a fucking hurry. Exactly. She exactly. doesn't want to know. Like, I don't need to embarrass yeah, or, uh, whatever. whatever. I don't fucking whatever. care. Right. Or, if, or if anything at all, you're just like, oh, excuse me, the back of the line's over there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. Like that's it. Mm-hmm. Like that's the most mm-hmm. right. Uh, and so. No, excuse excuse me. Uh, the back of the line's back there, lady. How about you get the fuck out? Right. <laughs> Compared to uh, how someone acts in a you can get cut off in traffic and people lose their shit. Yeah. Right? Oh, because there's no repercussions. Yeah, Until exactly. someone comes out with a baseball bat. So, Ronnie's uh, theory is also that when you're driving a car, you're like, you're handling this machine, right? And then, like, your hand's on the wheel and you're enclosed in this box. And so, it's almost like this. Like, you're a part of the machine. You know, like, it affects you. Like, the... Do you feel how you can like when you step on the pedal you like feel the engine and like you're grabbing the wheel and like you're almost like a, uh like a part of this thing almost like a cyborg type feeling right and so people don't act human in vehicles because of that like enclosed space so when he did have to, <laughs> this is his theory i'm not saying i agree i just thought it was like interesting no i uh, so, i'm just thinking about the thing that he drives right is like well, a fucking transformer exactly <laughs> Well, so that's why he only rode a bike for a long time. But then when he's like, he moved his house to the top of the hill, he's like, I got it. I got to get up the top of this hill. And and so anyway, so we got that, yeah, the three wheel, but it's like, it doesn't have a top to it, you know, the whole thing. Cause then it's like open and you know, he doesn't, whatever. But I just thought, uh, it's interesting. That's like, a good way to justify buying one of those. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, I, don't, I don't I'm not gonna say that that all of his theory is completely yeah. completely nuts but I just think it has a lot no, more half of it has makes some sense I think it has a lot more to do with the fact that people just feel like you're in your own world there's like something separating you from the other person you it's feel like more, you told somebody off even though you directly just like they didn't hear you and there's no repercussion right you're not, there's no threat of a, a actual physical confrontation it's just like people do all the time how often is someone mad at like somebody whatever but like in their own head they're mf in this person all day long you know this whole thing where it's like it's it's basically when you're in your car it's like you're in, you're, in, you're in your own space mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. that's what it is yeah that's funny but uh anyway yeah, that's that's kind of interesting that's true yeah. I don't know where we're out of time. I thought we'd been running. No, it was about half an hour. But yeah, that was an interesting podcast. Yeah, Factoid Nation. We we stated all kinds of stuff that we don't know anything about today. We started, we basically kind of studied the uh, human the human uh, being and uh, the possible beyond. Yeah, astrophysics. Today was a, a lot. There's a lot, a lot of us talking about things that we had heard other places don't have very much uh, evidence back up. Yeah. <laughs> well, that is out there. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. One way or the other. That's for sure. <laughs> All right. Yeah, that's, what, that's what this is. Factoid Nation. Factoid Nation. And we gave good nutrition advice. Uh, Chick-fil-A. You can get a gluten-free bun. Bro- broiled or grilled. Grilled chicken. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. No condiments necessary. Mm-hmm. And also, num- one more gluten-free life hack while mm. we're at it. So, if you are gluten-free and you go to like a restaurant or like a Benny, let's say like a Benny Hanna to be specific. Oh. Oh, yeah. You are guaranteed to get fed before everybody else uh-huh. at the entire table uh-huh. because they have to cook your food first mm-hmm. before it gets contaminated with everybody else's food. Because it's all on the same grill. But it's all on the same grill. Yeah. So you get special grill treatment mm-hmm. and you're by the time you're done eating, Everybody hasn't even gotten their food yet. You're, you're, you're done. And you're good to go. You're done eating, and the guy's just hitting the uh, little volcano. Yeah, you get your own little volcano show. Yeah. Actually, I don't know. Nah, no, we got screwed last time on the volcano. We got show. a volcano. Did we? Yeah. We got screwed on. You were stuff. you were busy eating. That's true. I'm not busy while he was doing. The I was volcano. enjoying my food while you guys were just starved and fucking waiting with, for this half-ass show to go down from that guy. He was not. No, nah, he was mailing it in. He was mailing it in. He did all the 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 classic jokes. So you go like. Uh, what does he say? Like, oh, egg, and then he like cracks an egg, and then he like spun the egg up in the air on his paddle onto like Japanese egg or something like that. I don't know. It was like the all the classic Benny Hanna jokes. Yeah, we got screwed on some classics though. Yeah, he left them out. Yeah. 
<laughs> no, he did a little pretend. He made a heart out of their eyes and pretended to make a beat with the spatula. Oh, all yeah. The, all the, um, the underscoop beat. The underscoop beat. Yeah. There you go. Oh, yeah. They, didn't, they also didn't ask us if we wanted fried rice or not. No. They just brought us out a bunch of bowls of white rice. Yeah. Remember that? I do. Fucking asshole. I was on keto, so I gave mine to Dante. What an asshole. Dante will not turn down a thing of rice, that's for sure. No boy loves rice. No, it does. God, I like rice. So do I. I love rice. You uh, you didn't go soy. You put your, uh, they even brought you out aminos. Yeah, they, they brought, brought you out, out liquid aminos. I think it was a gluten-free soy sauce, but I, I, technically it's probably sure. just liquid aminos. Yeah, I think so. They didn't bring me out like any brags or anything. Uh-uh, doing <laughs> well, that would something. That would be fun. Anyways. All right, well, thanks for listening. Hopefully you learned a lot today. Uh, or at least uh, strongly disagree with us. Yeah, either way. Either way, let us know. Podcast at caffeinekilos.com.